Hey guys, how are you doing? It's Adrian Ashby again, and I want to explain to you how to cook bacon in the oven properly and perfectly. So what we got here, we've got our cookie sheet, we got a sheet of foil, we got a baking rack, and of course, we got our bacon. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to line the sheet with the foil just to catch any excess grease. You really don't want to be washing too many uh, appliances here, you know? So we're also going to then put our baking rack on top of that. And cleanliness is, is you know, the big key in the kitchen. We're going to use our tongs once again. Line it up nicely. There we go. OK. All right. And one more for good luck. So. We have everything set up with our rack. Now what we want to do is put it in the oven. And what you want to do is make sure you're at maybe, maybe about 375 and you'll have it in there for maybe 10 to 15 minutes, depending on the crispiness you're looking for. Again, 10 to 15 minutes, all right? So we're going into the oven and here we go. All right, I will see you in 10. So, bacon's been in the oven for about 10 to 15 minutes. Let's see what the finished product looks like. First things first, you always want to have your mitt. Oh, that looks good. Oh boy. Oh boy. Let's set it down right here. Whew. Close that door. All right. What we've got here is oven baked bacon, people. This is some good stuff right here. And the reason why I know it's so good. You can see the color. It's cooked down perfectly. It's nice and crispy. It's got a little curl on the end. And one of the best parts is all the grease, for the most part, has left the bacon. But like with anything else, what we're gonna do is we are going to get a plate. We're gonna get a paper towel. Again, this is hot stuff, so tongs are your best friends with bacon. Place it on the paper towel. There we go. All right. And that, my friends, is bacon in the oven. Hey guys, it's Adrian Ashby here, and I'm here to talk to you about how to cook bacon perfectly. To me, bacon cooking perfectly is from the heart. It's all about your personal preference, but it's also about a little common sense. To me, cooking it, I would say, not necessarily low and slow, but maybe a little medium high would be the best way to go. You really want even heat distribution between all your slices of bacon. You want some of that fat to render out. You want, you want it to cook in its own grease. You also don't want to do silly things like cook it too high so that you can have burns, smoke, flare-ups, and grease pops. Grease pops are those little, you know, that hit you in the face, hit you on the arm. They feel worse than a bee sting or a mosquito bite, you know what I mean? To me, cooking bacon is like cooking a, a really good steak. You wanna limit the amount of flips. You wanna, you know, limit the amount of movement with the bacon. I would say anywhere from, I, depending on your amount of crispiness, your personal preference, could be two to five minutes per side. Another issue that I have with cooking bacon is overloading your pan. If you overload your pan, you run the risk of having your, your bacon cook unevenly. Some pieces will be better than others. Some pieces might be a little pink. Some pieces might be a little dark. And that's not cool, especially if it's for not only yourself, but friends and family. So watch out for that as well. The tools that you definitely need are a good pan, a good skillet. You need I would say pair of tongs, but you also need a good eye. And I think that as far as cooking bacon goes, as long as you love it, there's nothing you can do that would be wrong with it. Hey guys, this is Adrian Ashby here, and I'm here to show you how to fry bacon perfectly in your frying pan. What we got here is we got a nice medium high heat. We got our skillet. We've got our bacon and we've got our tongs. 
One of the things that I've done is I've left the bacon out for about maybe five or 10 minutes, let the fat loosen up a little bit because you don't really want any flare ups, any grease pops in the face. What we're gonna do is we're gonna lay the bacon out nice and flat. Oh, listen to that sizzle. Woo, that's good stuff right there. Now we're gonna do about maybe, I'd say three to four pieces of bacon at a time. Now, just gonna make sure that the heat is just just right, because again, you don't want any flare-ups now. Okay, so you want to treat your bacon like it's a nice steak. And one of the things you want to do is you want to limit the amount of flips, like a good steak. So I would say a good maybe two to three minutes on each side should be good enough, depending on how crispy and how well done you like your bacon. One of the first things I learned how to cook when I was a little boy was bacon. Grandma taught me, and one of the first things she taught me was low and slow. But you know, being a 10 year old boy, you want it now and right now. So, you know, I put it up to the highest heat I could possibly imagine, and that did not turn well in a, in a cast iron skillet, I'll tell you that right now. Whew! Lesson learned, I'll tell you that. All right, now it's time to flip. Look at that. Oh, that's good. That's beauty right there. Woo. All right. You want to keep your bacon in the middle so that your heat can distribute evenly. You don't want to overload your pan with bacon because then you'll have overlapping slices and then some slices will cook better than others. And that's not cool. You don't want that. This set of bacon right now, it looks to be done. Let me show you right now. Look at that. Look at that color. Woo. The fat is just right. We got our curl, and I think it's time to turn this, turn this thing off. Always make sure everything is safe. Now, what you wanna do is get your tongs, and gently grab that slice. Gently place it on your paper towel. All right, okay, there we go. Look at that right there. That's good bacon right there. Okay, now, you see it's on a paper towel, nice fresh plate. What I usually like to do, I'm a bit of a daredevil when it comes to the heat, I'm not really afraid. I'll actually make it into a nice little package and then press it out, press it out, press it out. So look at that. Bacon for breakfast, dinner, whatever you want. Hey y'all, it's Adrian Ashby once again, and what we're gonna do here is we're gonna make a fun twist on an old dessert. We're gonna make a bacon sundae. Now what you see in front of you is everything that you need for this bacon sundae. Obviously we've got our vanilla ice cream, we got our chocolate sauce, caramel sauce, our whipped cream, our bacon, crumbled bacon, and our cherries. So, first things first. Got our scoop, got our bowl, we're gonna do about maybe, I'd say three scoops, three generous scoops of ice cream. Let's see if we can get this going. All right. Very good. One. Now you don't necessarily have to be working at an ice cream shop to get the, nice, the best scoop. Whatever works for you is good enough for me. So let's get in there one more time, get a really, really nice scoop. Get one more just for good measure. All right. Now, before all this melts, let's have some fun. We're going to drizzle some chocolate sauce. I'll do about a spoonful, maybe, but depending on your preference, you go for what you know. I think it's, I think we can do another. I think we can, nobody's watching. There we go, all right, chocolate sauce. Now, a little caramel sauce. Get that over top, the contrast in color is amazing. There we go. We're gonna do a little whipped cream on top. We're gonna sprinkle with some bacon.
And now for the piece de resistance, our cherry right there. And that, my friend, is a bacon sundae. Sweets for the sweet. All right, hey gang, it's Adrian Ashby once again, and I'm gonna make a great dessert for you guys. It is a salted caramel bacon muffin. Let's get to it. So what we have here is first the dry mix. We've got our flour, we've got our baking powder, and our sea salt. So we're gonna mix this up again, just to make sure it's nice and evenly distributed amongst, amongst each other, and it will make for a really sick batter. All right, so now we've got our wet. We've got egg, we've got caramel sauce, we've got butter, and milk. So this has been whipped and mixed to perfection. So now it is time to, for the two to meet. All right, excellent. Get our spatula in there. Get all that good stuff in there out of this bowl, out of the bowl. All right, here we go. And now we mix. Again, nice and slow. You don't want flour shooting up at you. We got enough dishes to clean up. We don't need to clean up anything else, okay, folks? All right, we're gonna get everything to the consistency we want it. It's gonna be very doughy. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in some bacon, just enough, and we're gonna leave enough for our topping. And again, we're gonna fold it in so we get even distribution throughout the entire batter mix. And we're gonna be ready to rock and roll in just a minute. Now we're good. So again, Spray our pan a few inches away. Get the inside, get all the sides. And five and six. Okay. Again, you want to spoon in, or in this case, spatula in about two thirds of the way. Look at that. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, wow. Look at this piece here with the bacon. Unbelievable. Oh, whew. We got some good stuff going on right here, let me tell you. And there we go. So now what we're gonna do is, we're gonna sprinkle just a little bit of bacon on top. There we go. And now we're ready to pop these in the oven. We've got them topped. We have our bacon salted caramel muffins. And now we're gonna put them in the oven about 400 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes. And when they come out, you know I didn't forget about this. Then we'll drizzle even more caramel sauce on top of these bad boys. I hope you're ready. Ah, oh. oh, one of the first things you can get is the caramel coming off of the muffins. Let's shut this down. Alrighty. Okay, let's see what we got. So, as I mentioned before, we still had caramel sauce left behind. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drizzle just enough on top of the muffins to make it extra decadent and extra sticky. Okay, look at that. Oh my goodness, this is gonna be so good. Cover as much of the muffin as you wish. It's all up to you. As far as covering a muffin in caramel, there is no right or wrong, so don't worry about it. I'm not here to judge you, I'm here to guide you along the way. And there we have it. Salted caramel bacon muffins. Oh, so good. Hey guys, it's Adrian Ashby once again, and we're gonna make a nice treat for you. Um, we're gonna make bacon cookies. Now what we have here are the basis and the foundations of, of good cookie batter. Right here, we've got flour, baking powder, and salt. In here, we have here egg, butter, sugar, and vanilla. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take one of our little spoons here, 
get all the dry goods incorporated nice and evenly. Okay, excellent. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our wet and marry them together. Here we go. Nothing says dessert like butter and sugar, no? Okay. So now we're gonna mix nice and slow. You don't really need flour going all over the place. Trust me, it's in there, okay? Now it's time for some bacon. It's the best part. All right. You wanna treat the bacon in this particular recipe like you would chocolate chips. You wanna fold them in. You want them to be evenly distributed in the batter and you don't want them going all over the place. You can wanna kinda of control the direction that they're going in. So I think we're about ready to start spooning some batter onto our cookie sheet. And what we're gonna do is we are going to get some cooking spray onto our sheet. I like to go up and down, it covers everything, maybe a little on the ends, and there you go. Let's spoon some batter onto our cookie sheet. There you go, just like that, just a nice spoonful. And you wanna keep them apart so that they don't bake into each other. You want the cookies to be separated. You want them to have their own space, okay? And there we go, just like that, just like that. Each of these mounds are about a, a teaspoonful and they're gonna make it a nice size cookie. What's gonna happen is as they bake, they're gonna flatten out a little bit and, and rise just a little. So you, again, you want a nice amount of space between each cookie so that they don't bake into each other. Excellent, now it's time to put these guys in the oven. Well, all right, our cookies have been in the oven for about maybe 15 minutes or so at 350. Let's take them out and see how they're doing. Oh, I smell it right now. They smell amazing. Oh boy. Whew, there we go. Bacon cookies. Now don't let the shape, don't let the shape of the cookies deter you. They're still cookies and they're still really, really good. Look at how soft they are. They're gonna be really chewy. You're gonna have all that bacon goodness in there. So what you wanna do is you wanna let your cookies cool for about five minutes, and then you, with a spatula, a nice metal spatula, you'll scoop them off, set them on a plate, and then they're ready to be enjoyed. Hey gang, it's Adrian again. And what we're gonna do today is we're gonna do some bacon. It's a little bit different though this time. It's chicken fried bacon. That's right, you heard me correctly. Chicken fried bacon. This right here is dipped in a lot of goodness. We got flour, we've got egg wash, and then as an added little touch, we've got panko breadcrumbs. So what we're gonna do is this. We set up our station, we've got our oil ready to rock and roll. One of the ways you can test your oil is take a little pinch of flour, and if it bubbles up, you know you're ready to go. One of the keys, again, with your station is the setup. Basically, it's like this. Flour, egg, panko. Flour, egg, panko. Flour, egg, panko. You wanna be organized when you're doing something like this, too. So, what we're gonna do first is dredge it in the flour. Get the flour all over there. Nice, even coverage, see? Nice and even coverage, okay? Now with egg, sometimes it might not want to cooperate and stick everywhere, but you want to make sure that you get it all over your slice of bacon, all right? And then the final touch is your panko. We're gonna crust it up nice right here. There you go. And now, here comes the true test. Now we're gonna dip it in gently be careful, this is hot oil, so we're, gonna, we're not gonna throw it in here, okay? We're gonna gently back away, all right? We're gonna do one more, all right? Again, flour, roll it around a little bit, shake off some of that ex excess, and then we dip, okay? All right? Don't worry, my hands are clean. I know you're watching, don't worry, hands are clean. And then panko once again. Okay, all right. 
And then, once again, gently, and back away. Let's see how this first slice is doing. Look at that. Look at the color on that. Look at the crust. Oh, wow. Oh, you hear that? Whew. All right. All right, this one is definitely done. It's got a nice dark brown color to it. The panko is really blended nicely with the bacon. And you can tell the bacon is done by the doneness. See right there? Look at that sizzle. You can still hear it coming off the bacon. So this is definitely a winner right here. Gently on the pan. All right. So this one, again, nice golden brown complexion. There you go. We're set to go. All right. All right. Again, we got some great color here. Great flavor. The panko really adds to it. All right. And here is our last guy right here. And this right here is chicken fried bacon.